Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and then as we get into the com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with NVIDIA and yet another supposed release date for the next generation GeForce graphics cards. Although, this does come to us through industry people that journalists were speaking to at Computex, so perhaps it does have some merit. And then we're going to focus primarily on Intel, specifically the Intel Cascade Lake X and 56 threads, 56 threads, 56 threads, 28 physical cores at not four gigahertz or anything like that. No, five gigahertz. Holy crap. And then we'll finish off with the i7 8086K, which of course is essentially an i7 8700K, but on steroids and I was running at higher clock speeds and is to celebrate Intel's 40th anniversary for the 8086 processor. With that said, let's start things off with NVIDIA. So, <laughs> yeah, the GeForce 11 GTX 20 series, whatever you end up wanting to call it, is one of those long-running gags now in the tech industry. It's like, hey, you got any news on that new GeForce graphics card? And of course, ultimately, there have been a lot of hints and rumors. For example, the fact that GDDR6 is going to be supposedly timed with the release of the next generation GeForces. We've seen the Hot Chips conference, which uh, Hot Chips 30, apparently, they're going to be discussing the new architecture for the uh, GeForce graphics cards which, you know, generally speaking, new GeForce graphics cards are introduced and then you have hot chips. But then Jensen Huang pretty much just threw a whole ice bucket of water over the whole situation when he discussed with journalists the fact that, yeah, don't expect the new GeForces anytime soon. A little hint, it's a long time. Although, as I did say in yesterday's video, what else was he supposed to say? Because obviously he doesn't want to give information to AMD and if even if a graphics card's coming out in two weeks time, he doesn't necessarily want to interfere with the individuals who want to purchase, let's say, a GTX 1070. According to the website Tweaktown though, we will see these next generation of graphics cards release on July 30th. They are citing industry sources. Uh, they were supposedly going around and speaking to various uh, people within the industry at Computex. Now I can imagine who they were speaking to would be like AIBs and whomever else would speak off the record so they can't exactly say Jim at whatever company. But even so, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the cards very early, you know, August at the latest. This is like my latest theory of time frame. So perhaps September. I don't think it's going to be like November or anything like that. And I think ultimately... NVIDIA, yes, they do have the advantage in market share, but they also realize that sales figures for the next, for the current generation Pascal architecture have slowed down a little bit uh, or will slow down because people really now just want the next generation of graphics cards. <laughs> to me, the big piece of news today, however, is Cascade Lake X. Intel have demoed a 5 gigahertz capable 28 core 56 thread monster. It is monstrous. There is no other way to describe this particular processor. The gargantuan level of performance here is just absolutely unprecedented for a single socket CPU at home. Now, don't get me wrong. I was very impressed when I first heard murmurs of Threadripper 1950X and for value proposition of around a thousand US dollars when it was released. It was incredible. 16 cores, 32 threads, pretty awesome. The only negative well, there was two small negatives, and we did review Threadripper, by the way. The two small negatives I had with Threadripper, one, the clock speed, but that was part and parcel of the original Zen architecture, and the second was the whole creator mode and game mode and all that stuff, which I wasn't necessarily sold on. I did think that those two things were the only things that slightly gave a negative mark against it. But the X299 platform wasn't perfect either. The highest end skew was, of course, the 7980XE, and in terms of value, I don't necessarily know if it was worth it over the 1950X. It just was really expensive. <sighs> and then Intel dropped a bombshell. I, I was like, I read this, the, I read the news and I, I genuinely, my brain actually ticked over and said, oh, 18 cores again. That's nice. Wait, what? It says 28. That must be a typo. And I reread it and I read a bit more of a different article. I was like, huh? 
And it, I, it gen because I was quite tired, obviously, when you're waking up, and it, it genuinely took me a few moments to be like, oh, um, what, what, wait, what? 28 cores, 56 threads? And I kind of, like, just, my eyes just went wide, and I thought, just for a second, oh, this is blatantly going to be low 4 gigahertz at most we're going to be seeing this processor run out, right? It's going to be like some kind of marketing stunt. They're going to crank it at like 3.6 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz if you're doing... No, it's running at 5 gigahertz. Holy hell! I mean, that is just monstrous. So there are some questions we have. The first is pricing. Well, we can imagine it's going to be over 2,000 US dollars, right? It's not going to be any cheaper. So if you're thinking this is going to be a value or budget orientated processor, and let's face it, you didn't. Well, I've got bad news for you, pal. The second thing is that this is not using the X299 platform as we know it. It is not using LGA 2066. Instead, what we appear to be seeing here is a server grade motherboard. It is the Asus ROG Dominus, um, which is a hexachannel motherboard, just for your FYI, using the LGA3647 socket. Now, you can clearly see that this motherboard has actually been altered a little bit, and various websites have managed to snag some images of it, and it looks rather nice. But to me, this processor, Intel CPU, is just absolutely crazy. We can also see, thanks to an image grabbed by techpowerup.com, that the memory configuration appears to be G-Skill Trident Z running in a six-channel memory configuration at 3800 MHz, which, let's face it, makes an awful lot of sense, given the sheer number of cores here and threads, memory bandwidth would of course be king. Other questions I've personally got would be the number of PCIe lanes, something that the X299 platform received an awful lot of criticism over from both myself and other folks. And with any luck, we don't see another 7740X or what have you on this specific platform. After all, I think we can all agree that anything fewer than 8 cores on a HDD platform is just pointless. And honestly, I think even 10 cores is just about scraping by the minimum entry point. Intel also did hint that they are still working on Coffee Lake X, and for those who are going to ask in the comments, unfortunately we did not see anything regarding the 8-core processors in the mainstream. Roll on the... So what are my thoughts on this particular processor? Say. Well, honestly, a couple of things. One, Intel's EMIB technology is really impressive, and the fact that they have this processor run... I know I keep repeating this, but the fact that it's running at 5 gigahertz, all cores, all threads, is astounding. I mean... It was amazing to see that. It, the demo, <laughs> like, the, the fact that it just, it, it pleased me on a level that I can't even, like, explain. It's just like this, this wild little pleasure of seeing the, the various threads just rip through Sony Bench in like two seconds flat, which is absolutely amazing. It was, it was kind of amusing. And the second thing is that I want to know what AMD are going to counter with. Obviously, AMD's Computex is just mere hours away, but, from the rumours that I've heard, and, you know, Paul in 24 hours is probably going to co contradict the Paul of now, you know, with updated information, but from the rumours we've heard, we're only going to be seeing a 16-core Threadripper, 32 threads. I don't know if they can do that. But then again, it is worth noting that that particular processor, uh, Intel's processor, doesn't have a tentative release date. They're saying basically by the end of this year, along with the rest of the Cascade X platform, I'm going to be curious to see what AMD are going to be doing. Are they going to up the core count? Theoretically, they can. Um, I mean, you know, the Threadripper dies at the moment, as we all know. Essentially, there are two blank dies on uh, the 1950X. So, in theory, they could certainly increase the core count, assuming, you know, they did a few other bits and bobs. But will they? Well... I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we, in theory at least, saw a 24-core uh, Threadripper or perhaps a 32-core. They could certainly do that. The issue is they would be behind, at least we suspect, in raw clock speed. And that's really my concern here. It's the fact that Intel have a pure clock speed advantage. And I want to know what clock speed we're going to see uh, Threadripper debut at. In, so Intel could possibly win against AMD in a couple of fronts, one clock speed, the two the core speed, uh, sorry, core number, the sheer number of threads, 
And so it's really for AMD to play catch up on those two fronts. And finally, which is going to be the obvious battleground pricing. Finally, Intel have also officially unveiled the 8086K. I say officially because there were so many leaks even just a couple of weeks ago that it's all kind of like, well, okay, there's that as well. Don't get me wrong, it's not that I'm not excited about the processor, but it's more the anniversary event that I'm excited the C uh, uh, over the CPU, not because of the CPU specifications. Although it is rather interesting that it is Intel's first 5 gigahertz processor. There were a couple of things that did somewhat put me off, the primary one, of course, being the fact that it's not soldered. But even so, it's kind of cool that it's 5 gigahertz, right? The first CPU to reach that, although it's not that impressive to hear 6 cores, 12 threads at 5 gigahertz when I've just been talking about a 28 core, 56 thread CPU, is it really? Yeah. Anywho, it is, of course, the 40th anniversary of the 8086, and Intel are also doing a giveaway. I'll try to remember to link that in the video description if you're interested in entering. But, being honest with you, um, this processor is quite, kind of cool. I would be somewhat hesitant to suggest that you rush out and buy it, unless it's you're doing it for the memories, unless you're doing it because you want it as a collector's piece or something like that, until we actually see overclocking results. Uh, TDP is essentially identical. Most all the specifications are essentially identical other than the clock speed. So it's like, okay, you're paying a small price premium. We don't know the exact pricing yet, but it's going to be under 400 great British pounds. Uh, we assume it's going to have slightly better sil uh, quality silicon, which is excellent. But I want to know what the average overclock is going to be for these processors. Is it going to be, let's say, 200 megahertz above the 8700, uh, um, yeah, the 8700K? If it is, you know, that may be worth it to you if frame rate is king. For my money, however, and obviously I'm not telling you what to spend your cash on, I would say that the 8700K is probably going to be okay. It's probably going to be absolutely perfect for you, unless, once again, you just want to buy the 8086K for the sake of saying, well, you've got the 8086K. It's kind of cool, right? I mean, come on, it does have some coolness to it. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, subscribe, ring the bell icon, because that would be awesome. I also, I'm going to take a very small opportunity to plug our Patreon. I don't normally do this in videos, but, you know, occasionally I just kind of throw it out there. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to donate or anything like that, just go ahead and check it out. And if you are interested, we would appreciate even a dollar a month. But with that said, don't feel you have to. I just appreciate you damn well watching the video. It's honestly, it's really cool. And uh, thanks for, you know, spending some time with me. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff. Have a great day.